everybody. <laughs> Sorry, I had like all this stuff happening. What's going on? Good morning. We are here for, as the title tells you, to discuss our BFF on the channel, Louise Mary Taylor. So here we are. Let's just kind of get right into it. So this morning I woke up around 5.30 a.m. like I do every morning because... I don't know. I have really have no explanation. I just wake up early these days. And I like, you know, go to the kitchen. I like start doing my thing for the day. And then I see Samantha Stark has tweeted an article about Lou Taylor. Now, the New York Times has actually done a few really good exposés on the Britney Spears case, including um, interviewing a whistleblower named Alex who worked for Black Box Security. Black Box Security was a security company that basically was invented to monitor and handle Britney Spears, traffic her through Hollywood. And so now we have a whistleblower coming out to New York Times, and today the New York Times did actually publish an expose on the... Um, on the internet. Okay, so I just want to get a couple of y'all's comments real quick. A woman freed says, no matter what this article says, it is certainly not the full story. They need to manage the fallout and remind everyone how deeply religious Lou is. Now, I did find it very interesting um, that they did not include any part of the story about Lou Taylor coming to my job and trying to make me stop talking about Stonebridge because the article does mention Stonebridge and I think it would have made their story a lot stronger. I mean, but whatever. I mean, nobody asks me anything. Who am I, right? So let's just get right into it. I'm going to put the article up here. Okay. So here's what it says. And it is linked below as well. Now, I did have to actually pay for a stupid New York Times subscription to be able to read this. Um, but I'm going to read it here to you on my channel so that y'all don't have to pay. I do not believe that the news should be behind paywalls. I mean, some stuff is like, who cares? Like, you know, this thing or that thing. It's not the news. But this is like a huge multi-million dollar financial corruption, perhaps criminal conspiracy scheme. And so I do not believe that it is in good taste to put this type of articles behind paywalls. And so here, we're going to read it together on my channel here. All right. So I'm literally going to read the whole article line by line. It's kind of long. So that's what you're getting in for. That's what you're doing here today. So Britney Spears felt trapped. Her business manager benefited. Louise Taylor faces questions about whether she improperly enriched herself as the pop star's business manager. Now, I do just want to say real quick, if y'all are here hoping for some exclusive tea that we've never heard before, there's really not a lot of that in this article. If you've been following my channel, if you've been following my Instagram and all of that for the past year or, you know, year and a half, you're going to know almost all of this stuff. Nothing is brand new in this article, save like two or three facts that are very big deals and we will get to them. But this is just basically the mainstream media finally doing what they needed to do a long time ago, which is report on Lou Taylor. So let's get this article here and it is linked below. You might have to actually purchase it if you want to read it, which sucks. But um, yeah. Okay. So here's the cute little, um, you know, whatever <clears throat> thumbnail type of thing here. Louise M. Taylor, who is the one at the center, was the business manager to Britney Spears' estate. Uh, Britney's lawyers are questioning how Lou and Jamie handled the star's finances. Okay. <clears throat> so as you can see, it was published today at 5 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Time. So only about five hours ago. Now here's what the article says. In early 2008, a small time Tennessee company with big time aspirations made a loan to Britney Spears' father, who for years had struggled financially. Now, I don't know if the article gets into this, but uh, Jamie Spears did declare bankruptcy in 1998, the same year that Britney's Hit Me Baby One More Time video and, and um, album came out. So then less than a month later, in er, you know, early 2008, this tiny Tennessee company, Lou Taylor's company, gave Jamie Spears a loan. Less than a month later, after consulting with the owner of the company, TriStar Sports and Entertainment Group, Jamie had his daughter placed into a conservatorship, a legal arrangement typically reserved for people unable to care for themselves or work. He would wield vast power over Britney's life and finances. Jamie soon sent his daughter on a 97-show international tour, and he hired TriStar, to whom he still owed at least $40,000, to manage Britney's 
business. So the New York Times doesn't actually come straight out and say this, but the implication here is, did Jamie work with Lou Taylor to put Britney in a conservatorship in order to pay back that loan? And did Lou Taylor give the loan to Jamie because she knew they were going to take over Britney's life, traffic her into doing all these concerts she didn't want to do and take her money? Um, yeah, so a woman freed another great point. They're referring to this as a tiny Tennessee company. And it ain't that tiny. The Kardashians are clients. Travis Scott is a client. We got Reba McIntyre, Britney Spears. It's not really a tiny company. But in 2008, it was a tiny company. And they basically made their whole business off the back of Britney Spears. Over the ensuing decade, that assignment would generate millions of dollars for TriStar and help transform it and its owner, Louise Mary Taylor, into one of the premier managers in entertainment with clients including the Kardashians. So just like a woman Freed just pointed out. Today, Deep Taylor, uh, Deep Taylor, <laughs> oh my God, Miss Taylor, a deeply religious former bookkeeper who had few notable clients before Britney, faces questions from Miss Spears' lawyers and others about how others would be me and y'all about how much money she's made as the pop star's business manager and whether she improperly enriched herself. Again, I don't understand why they have to insert deeply religious for two reasons. First of all, I don't know that Lou Taylor is in fact deeply religious. This woman seems like Satan himself. But second of all, what in the hell does that have to do with anything? Why are we putting that in here right now? Why are we describing Lou Taylor as deeply religious whenever they could have described her as anything? They could have described her as unhinged, psychopathic. They could have described her as greedy, money hungry, but they described her instead as deeply religious. And I do wonder if that's to tug at the heartstrings of people and make them feel more sympathetic with Lou Taylor. I mean, I don't understand either why they, they, in, they put the deeply religious crap in here, but we'll get to that. The conservatorship, which a California judge ended last month, was intended to protect Britney from financial exploitation. Another kind of lie here because really what they had to check off in the paperwork, and, and if you've watched my channel for a while, you know, is they, they actually lied to the court and said Britney had dementia. Now, there were some things mentioned here and there about her being vulnerable to exploitation, etc., etc., but really what the reason that she got legally put into this conservatorship is because the conservators lied to the court and said Britney Spears at 26 years old had dementia. And I do have the court documents that show that in the um, description box linked below. You can navigate through that Google Drive and see all the documents. This one would have been from February 1st, 2008. And they did lie and say Britney had dementia. And so New York Times leaves that out here. Um, Brittany had said she has felt coerced to work. The more she did, the more money she generated. And the more flowed to the lawyers, managers, Lou Taylor, agents, and other gatekeepers who surrounded the singer, thanks in part to a variety of unusual financial arrangements. Near the center of it all was Miss Taylor. According to a New York Times investigation based on court documents, financial records, company documents, and interviews with more than 70 people, I was one of the people they interviewed, by the way, um, Miss Taylor or her businesses, not long, okay, so near, near the center of it all was Miss Taylor or her businesses. Not long after the conservatorship started, accounts for Brittany were opened at an obscure Tennessee firm, Stonebridge Wealth Management, that Miss Taylor co-founded and co-owned. Again, I would have been the one to tell New York Times this or one of the people to, and I actually started making videos about Stonebridge Investment Council in July 2020. I had tried to make the mainstream media at the time understand what the real problem behind Britney's conservatorship was, and it's exactly the, the issues that are now finally, you know, 17, 18 months later, however long later, being brought up to the public's attention. And that is, this was a scheme and a ruse and a conspiracy that was completely set up in order to traffic Britney Spears, control her body and control her money. Not only the money that she currently was in possession of, but her ability to earn potential money in the future. Her brand, Britney, the brand was at financial issue. And I have been screaming about this from the mountaintops for the last year. Thank God. Thank God they're finally starting to talk about it in the mainstream media. I'm really not sure what took so long. 
All right. Not long after the conservatorship started, accounts for Brittany, as I have been reporting for a year, were opened up with TriStar Sports and Entertainment. I'm sorry, with Stonebridge Investment Council. Now, it also is known as Stonebridge Wealth Management. It has a lot of names, and all of this is publicly available information that anyone can find on their own at the SEC's website and on FINRA Broker Check. So, look, Lou Taylor co-owned and co-founded this Stonebridge firm. And if y'all have been following me for a while, you already know. You've heard this time and time again. Lou Taylor, in 2002, co-founded Stonebridge Investment Council. At the same time, all kinds of other things were getting set up including TriStar Sports and Entertainment. So in 2008 and nine, just, you know, less than a year after Britney was in this conservatorship, Lou Taylor starts putting Britney's money into Stonebridge Investment Council. This is all old news. We all been knowing this. It's nothing new right now. While the firm said it did not receive fees for many services it provided, several other maneuvers appeared to benefit Lou Taylor. When a security company hired by Britney surveilled the Free Britney protesters who criticized Miss Taylor, Britney's estate paid, according to a former employee at the security company. The estate also paid some of Lou Taylor's legal fees, leading Miss Spears' lawyer to complain to a California court. Now, this is all arising from the Brian Kuchar lawsuit. Um, Lou Taylor in 2019 did sue an alleged fan named Brian Kuchar. Now, Brian has signed NDAs, and so he's unable to really talk about this case. But I was able to actually find the, the court documents and find everything and look it up. If y'all want me to do an overview of that case, leave a comment below. Um, but Lou Taylor sued a fan in 2019 for basically using a copyright image of her, uh, a, a copyrighted image of her. And Lou Taylor also tried to get my YouTube channel shut down. She got actually got me copyright struck on my YouTube channel for using that same exact picture. Now, thank God YouTube actually did the right thing, took the copyright strike away because as I would know, since I'm a lawyer, it was complete fair use and I was willing to go to court over it. So I guess everybody calmed down over that. But the same fan, the same issue arose in 2008, uh, sorry, 2019. And Lou Taylor sues this alleged fan. They ended up settling outside of court for about $20,000, according to some leaked documents. But the interesting part about that lawsuit is Lou Taylor actually racked up over $100,000, maybe even over $300,000 in legal bills, and she billed Britney Spears' estate for it. So she, so Lou Taylor sues a fan for copyright infringement against Lou Taylor, then try to get Britney to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for that. And I don't know, did Britney's, did Britney's estate get, you know, billed for the $20,000 settlement? That's a question that I'm interested in answering and having answered. Um... Yeah. Okay. So this is Jamie Spears leaving a court in 2008. And they always use these robust pictures of Jamie. I think it's very interesting that they use these pictures of him because this is no longer what Jamie Spears looks like. If you look at my thumbnail image of this video, that's what Jamie looks like. And so I think, you know, when we're doing these media analyses of how the mainstream media tells stories and things, it's really important to look at the pictures they use because this is like a robust looking man in a suit. Like it looks like, yeah, of course he should be in charge of something. But if y'all saw that man today, he's like 67 pounds, probably got one or two teeth left. I mean, the man looks bad and it looks like he hasn't taken very good care of himself. And that's not like to be ableist or whatever. I got disabilities too, baby. But if you can't take care of your own self and your own body, maybe you don't deserve to be in charge of billions of dollars worth of estate because last I checked, he never even graduated college. What are his qualifications? Like he's not in good health. I'm just concerned. You know what I mean? All right. In 2010, Tens of thousands of dollars, again, this is not new, everybody knows this already, maybe maybe not if you're just getting here, but in 2010, about $50,000 of Britney Spears' money from her charitable foundation called the Britney Spears Foundation went into a counseling group that alleges to be Christian, but it's basically gay conversion therapy, um, with ties to Lou Taylor and her husband and their church. And whose founder once boasted that the group helped people abandon lesbianism. Okay. So that would have been Nancy Alcorn. Again, I've made videos about this. This is not new. Um, but Nancy Alcorn is the founder of Mercy Ministries. And basically, it's a gay conversion camp. And they have little um, sites of this 
I don't know, organization all over the world. They actually were shut down in Australia because what they were doing was telling women that they could come for free, but then they were stealing the women's government checks, cashing them and keeping the money. And so Australia said, no, no, baby, you can't, you can't operate over here anymore. Um, and so they changed their name and, you know, ran away from Australia, but they still do operate. They have houses all over the place and there's even, it's so, it's so horrible of a place and so horrible of an organization that there's actually a survivor's network. So if y'all are interested in doing research on this, it's called mercy ministry survivors or mercy survivors. Mercy ministries has blocked me on Twitter. They've changed their name from mercy ministries to mercy multiplied. But what the New York times is now finally telling the main, you know, the public that, you know, didn't hear from me first and I didn't hear that. I didn't even discover that. Other people had discovered that part. Like I just was repeating it. $50,000. Basically, Britney Spears' charitable foundation was completely bankrupted because or completely drained of all of its assets and funds because they wanted to fund this basically gay conversion therapy. And I wish that they would sue me because facts ain't defamation and we can sort it out of the deposition. So if you're mad about it, Nancy, you know what my number is. Okay. Miss Spears, that's Brittany, who collected million. Oh, sorry. See, I wish they would use first names. Y'all got to start doing first names. Jesus Christ. Mr. Spears, that's Jamie, who collected millions of dollars from Brittany as her conservator, also at times donated 10% of that income to a church owned. It says run by the Taylors. It's owned by the Taylors. A church owned and run by the Taylors, according to financial documents, reviewed by the times i have the documents if y'all want to see them i can pull them up like at another time um and miss spears oh no not the documents that show they donated 10 percent of that income actually this is actually um alert alert something i did not know which was that jamie spears was donating 10 percent of his income to calvary chapel in brentwood tennessee and he's never lived in brentwood so i don't know why he was tithing to that church um, but I do have the documents that show that Lou Taylor owns that church. Um, and Britney's estate paid for, uh, Britney's estate paid for advertisements in Hollywood trade publica publications praising Lou Taylor and TriStar. So basically Lou Taylor would get her name in the Hollywood Reporter and different um, publications like top business manager. And all the while she was using Britney's money to put her self in these publications it's all a big farce that's why listen i y'all are never gonna see me on no top lawyers of whatever whatever list because you have to submit yourself for those you have to somebody has to nominate you you have to usually pay a fee and so lou taylor's out here trying to build up her reputation by quite literally stealing from britney spears isn't it uh it isn't clear if britney knew how her money was spent her lawyer is investigating whether jamie um, Lou and others unfairly profited from what Brittany viewed as her wrongful captivity. They should be in jail, Brittany said in court in June. Alex Weingarten, a lawyer for Jamie Spears, said that Jamie's administration of Brittany's estate was always consistent with Brittany's best interests. And, you know, he's also lied a lot. So, you know, you can't really trust anything these lawyers say on this case. He said the court, uh, he said the court, a co-conservator and Britney's court appointed lawyer approved of Jamie's decision. So again, they're, they're going to keep trying to throw everybody else under the bus because that's their only option. Really? The lawyer added, Jamie has nothing to hide and will therefore hide nothing. Okay. Charles Harder, a lawyer for Miss Taylor and TriStar said, um, oh no, I'm sorry. Charles Harder, a lawyer for Ms. Taylor, said TriStar faithfully served the estate and helped Britney build an estimated $60 million fortune. That is a success by any standard. And on honestly, Charles, unfortunately, you're wrong because Britney was worth a lot more than $60 million whenever she was unjustly and unconstitutionally put into this conservatorship with the help, help of your client. And so, unfortunately, this is just not true. Lou Taylor stole from Britney Spears. And then whenever I was doing investigations on Lou Taylor, she went ahead and tried to get me shut up by hiring my law firm. If this is coming as news to you, then y'all can watch my video on exposing Lou Taylor and the Lou Taylor playlist. But this is par for the course for Lou Taylor. Lies, lies, lies. And then when the lies start catching up, threats, threats, threats. Matthew G. White, a lawyer for Stonebridge, defended Stonebridge's work, saying in a recent letter, 
I'm reading y'all's comments. Sorry. Um, saying in a recent letter, so Matthew G. White, I'm definitely going to look this guy up, is a lawyer for Stonebridge. Now, I haven't heard anything from Stonebridge or any Stonebridge lawyers ever before because, well, they haven't been mentioned in the mainstream media, but thank God it's finally happening. Defended the firm's work, saying that, saying in a recent letter to Brittany's legal team that Stonebridge worked diligently and tirelessly to provide valuable services to benefit the estate, often for no fee. Mm, but how often did you charge a fee? And how much was that fee? <laughs> In the United States, there are estimated 1.3 million conservatorships, also known as guardianships. Conservators are granted broad powers over a vulnerable person's life and are required to act in their best interest. Under California judicial rules, the conservator must avoid personal, business, or professional interest or relationship that is or reasonably could be perceived as being self-serving or adverse to the best interest of the conservatee. So basically that's fancy, you know, lawyer words for you're supposed to avoid enriching yourself. You have a responsibility not to enrich yourself, in fact. Brittany's case highlights how that doesn't always happen and comes amid growing calls to reform a system that can victimize rather than protect. A conservatorship should be a last resort. Her, Matthew, uh, her lawyer, Matthew S. Rosengart, told a court in August, it should not be a tool for the enrichment of third parties. A boat named Perfect. Uh, Miss Taylor, that's Lou, grew up in upstate New York. She played for the high school volleyball team and spent a semester at Monroe Community College, but she did not graduate. Mr. Harder noted that Bill Gates and Steve Jobs also didn't graduate from college. So this gives you a little insight into what Lou Taylor thinks of herself. She thinks that she's on the level of Bill Gates. <laughs> she thinks that she's on the level of Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. And honestly, she's not. Like, first of all, she's not created anything that's important. All she's done is enrich herself. But it's very interesting to finally find out Lou Taylor does not have a college degree. She does not have any certifications. She does not have any qualifications, quite frankly, other than just like doing this, like faking it till she makes it all this time. And honestly, looks like she just been faking it the whole time. Because everywhere you look in Britney's conservatorship, the financial corruption and conflicts of interest are unavoidable. Um, you just see them everywhere. So Lou Taylor did not, this just in, breaking news, Lou Taylor did not graduate from college. In fact, she only went to one semester of college. And again, that's not me trying to say like everybody has to go to college, but if you're posturing yourself as somebody who is going to be able to take care of other people's money in a very highly complex regulated system, I mean, it's just very confusing to me as to how she would be able to do this with, with no college degree. But I mean, get in where you fit in, I guess. Honestly, it looks like she should have gone to college because from where I'm standing, she messed a lot of stuff up. In Lou's early 20s, she got a job as a bookkeeper at a health insurance company in Rochester, New York. I think it was Liberty Mutual. Um, Rob Taylor, who is now Lou's husband, worked as a draftsman in the same building. The pair met at a blood drive and got married in 1989 on their 21-foot boat named Perfect. The bride and groom wore white bathing suits. The couple moved to Florida the next year. Lou Taylor joined a management firm that represented entertainers. In 1993, she started TriStar Accounting Group to serve similar clients. Now, this right here is not news. We already knew that. Some of Lou's early customers were amateur athletes who went professional. She also started representing the model Nikki Taylor, the face of many teen magazines in the 1990s. In 2000, Miss Taylor sold the business to the accounting firm Gilman uh, Kiyoshia. And I've done a lot, a lot, a lot of research into Gilman. Um, it's strange their parent company, National Financial Services, is also a related company to one of the banks. Like there's a lot of things going on with Gilman and Lou Taylor, Mitchell S. Martin. I've made tons of videos about it. You'll have to go watch my Instagrams from the last year to really catch it up. But again, not, not brand new news. Another interesting thing I don't see cited here is in 2001, the parent or a sister, oh uh, no, uh, um, a subsidiary in 2001, a subsidiary of Gilman, Kiyoshia or whatever it is, Kiyokia, sorry, don't know how to say the name, 
a subsidiary of that company called like Asset and Financial Planning began acquiring TriStar Sports and Entertainment. And then all of a sudden in 2001, they returned the money back and allowed TriStar to be um, independent again. So I don't know if, if New York Times maybe just missed that and they didn't report it in this story or if they know something I don't know. But in 2001, the Securities and Exchange Commission did report that Britney Spears, um, sorry, did report that TriStar Sports and Entertainment was going to be acquired by a company owned by Gilman, but then returned. Again, I've spent probably tens of thousands of hours researching this, so this is just something I just know off the top of my head. Gilman executives soon suspected that Lou Taylor was hiding money owed to the company, according to Michael P. Ryan, a top executive at the time and another person familiar with what happened. Now, Michael P. Ryan was also involved in a bunch of stuff at Prime Capital Services that ultimately ended up getting them um, derogatory marks by the SEC, if I'm recalling correctly. But this guy isn't necessarily the most trustworthy. But listen, enemy of my enemy is my friend. And he's telling me that they suspected Lou Taylor was hiding money. Um, a locksmith changed the locks at TriStar's offices to prevent employees from entering. As an armed security guard took watch, um, Gilman's lawyer searched Lou Taylor's files, according to Mr. Ryan and the other person familiar with the matter. She ultimately agreed to pay the money in question. Okay, so then they then the New York Times asked Lou's lawyer about that situation, Mr. Harder. So he said, so this is what the lawyer said in response to that. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Lou Taylor had only temporarily placed funds into a separate bank account because Gilman wasn't paying bills that it was supposed to pay. What bills, girl? The lawyer said TriStar was open about everything and did nothing wrong. There was no lawsuit or official record of the accusations. The two companies agreed to separate in July 2001. Lou Taylor could start anew. By late 2001, the Taylors arrived in Brentwood, Tennessee. Okay, so that's why they left Florida. It looks like they left Florida because she was accused of doing some bad things with money. And look, boom, she pops on over to Brentwood and starts doing the same thing allegedly for entertainment purposes only. Mr. Taylor, that's Rob, started a chapter of Calvary Chapel, an independent network of churches. Tax exempt, don't forget. He was the pastor and Lou Taylor was the ladies ministry leader and she joined the board and I have the paperwork to show that she was on the board and this is their church that they own. Lou also incorporated TriStar Sports and Entertainment Group and that was in the year 2002. I wanted to create a business management firm that would service athletes and artists and make a difference by upholding morality and integrity, she later said on a podcast. In 2002, Miss Taylor co-founded Stonebridge. Her business partner was Mitchell Stanley Martin, who had been CFO for a televangelist inspirational network and a finance manager at Motorola. He also had been a broker and an investment advisor, but they left that part out. Stonebridge was tiny. It did only have three employees. Until 2006, it managed less than $10 million. Now, I have so many videos in this. Now we're getting into my bread and butter, y'all. I've literally made hundreds of hours of videos about this exact topic. Entertainment business managers said Stonebridge seemed like an unlikely candidate to advise high wattage stars. Before long, though, the upstart firm would land one of the world's biggest celebrities. Miss Spears rocketed to fame in 1998 with the release of her single, Baby One More Time. At 16 years old, she became a pop culture sensation. Her success opened doors for her younger sister, Jamie Lynn Spears, who in 2005 starred in the Nickelodeon series, Zoe 101. And Jamie Lynn then became a TriStar client. That year, she turned 14. Jamie would also become a client of TriStar's. The details of how he and Miss Taylor met are not clear, but it is alleged that they met in rehab. Britney Spears began publicly struggling. Shortly after giving birth to her second son in 2006, she filed for divorce from her children's father, Kevin Federline. A battle ensued, and Miss Spears eventually lost custody of her sons. In January 2008, she was twice hospitalized on involuntary psychiatric holds. 
One, the first time at Cedar sinai and the second time at UCLA Medical Center. Now, it is widely speculated that they had to try the second 5150 hold because they needed to get Brittany into the UCLA Medical Center instead of Cedar sinai because um, UCLA would help you with what you needed to get people into conservatorships. I mean, that's where Kanye West was 5150. Lindsay Lohan, I believe, has been 5150 there. Misha Barton has been 5150 there. Mariah Carey has been 5150 there. Kanye West. I mean, the list goes on. Her father, who had filed for bankruptcy in 2008, struggled with alcoholism and faced accusations of physical, verbal, and Another type of abuse that they are leaving out here that I can't say on um, YouTube, but you can fill in the blanks, had largely been absent from Britney's life, and now he re-entered. Around the time that Britney was hospitalized, and while Jamie was working as a mere cook, Jamie received a loan of at least 40 grand from TriStar. Now, Jamie's lawyer... Alex Weingarten initially told the New York Times that Jamie never received a loan from TriStar, but then later he recanted and confirmed that it did exist. And then this was what uh, Alex said, TriStar routinely loans money to clients. Okay, but why is Jamie Spears a client of TriStar if he was working as a cook? Who did you loan the money to? Brittany or Jamie? Because Jamie's not a client. On February 1st, after discussing the matter with Lou Taylor, well, I should just say Jamie's not a client. Maybe he was, but why would he be? On February 1st, that was the day of the conservatorship, after discussing the matter with Lou Taylor, Jamie petitioned the California court for conservatorship powers. Um, Lou's lawyer said Lou did not push for the creation of a conservatorship, but I'm going to say that's a lie, in my opinion. His lawyers argued that Jamie was unable to care for, oh, sorry, that Brittany was unable to care for herself and was vulnerable to exploitation. Again, New York Times, I don't know why, is leaving out the fact that Jamie and his lawyers checked the box that Brittany had dementia and that they were going to need orders relating to a dementia placement. So I'm not sure why they're not putting that part in. But not only did Jamie say Brittany can't care for herself and she's vulnerable to exploitation, but they also said she had dementia and gave no proof of that at all whatsoever. The judge, Reva Gates, approved Jamie's request. She granted Jamie and a lawyer the power to enter into contracts for Brittany, run her businesses, and invest Brittany's money. Brittany initially got an allowance of $1,500 a week. Now, that amount did go up a little bit as the years went on, but Jamie would collect an estimated $6 million over the course of the conservatorship. The existence of the TriStar loan, which hasn't previously been reported, is troubling, said Anthony Palmieri, the incoming president of the National Guardianship Association, which represents conservators. I don't know why they're talking to people that represent conservators. I am very suspicious of anybody who's in that field. I don't know why they would, would ask for somebody from that, but whatever. Ugh. It makes me wonder where the allegiance lies, said this guy who makes money off of conservatorships as his living. Um, okay. Okay. And in Florida, oh girl, mm -mm, he should have never ever talked about this because I'm about to, oh no, I'm about to investigate him for everything that he is worth. Sir, you should have never said nothing in this article because I have bad vibes. Y'all ever just read something, you're like vibing out, you're like vibes, 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 vibes. You're like, I definitely got to look into that. This is one of those moments. Okay, so this guy says, is the conservator making decisions in the best interest of the conservatee or the business manager? Who do they owe a debt to? Oh, so who they owe a debt to, right. So they're saying, all right. It's actually pretty bad, even though I represent conservators. It's pretty bad that Jamie took a loan from TriStar because it's like, who, where does his loyalty lie? Lou's lawyer said in an email, a small loan later repaid had no effect on TriStar's work for the estate in later years, which I don't know. This guy just seems like he just lies. So I'm going to say that's probably a lie too. The, the circus. Under California law, conservatorships are reserved for people who cannot feed, clothe, or, or shelter themselves. Only months after arguing that his daughter was incapacitated and therefore needed to be under his control, Jamie committed her to an eight-month tour named Circus. TriStar was hired to serve as the tour's business manager, handling its finances and accounting. 
the tour grossed an estimated $130 million. So here's the Res Stuart and Linda Resnick Neuropsychiatric Hospital at UCLA where all the famous people get 5150. Ugh, it gives me shivers. Also, just so y'all know, completely unrelatedly, this is one of the preeminent electroshock therapy hospitals in the whole world. <laughs> so, completely unrelated. You do that math if you want to. By December 2009, TriStar was finalizing a contract to become the manager, not just for the tour, but also for Britney's estate. The estate includes many, but not all, of Britney's assets. That's right. Most assets are in SJV Trust, or they were, before they were depleted. The firm's responsibilities included paying bills and cash management. TriStar would receive 5% of Britney's adjusted gross entertainment revenue, according to Lou's lawyer, who declined to explain what that meant. Okay, yeah, what is adjusted gross entertainment revenue? Nobody knows. It's just something Lou Taylor made up and started paying herself 5% of. Around the same time, this is not new news, we already knew this, Stonebridge began providing the conservatorship with financial advice regarding three accounts held at another firm. And some of Britney's money did also end up in Stonebridge. We know that by 2010's accounting reports. Lou Taylor, at the time, owned half of Stonebridge, which y'all already knew through me, which shared offices with TriStar in Tennessee, which y'all already knew through me, 215 Brentwood Circle, according to securities filings obtained via public records request. Um, you don't need to do a public records request for this. Y'all can just look it up right now on the Google. I have many Instagram lives and many TikToks doing just that. So uh, New York Times trying to act like they did all these public records requests. Baby, you just had to do a Google search. It really wasn't that hard. In a recent letter to Miss Spears' legal team, Stonebridge said it provided the advisory services without receiving any fees or compensation whatsoever. That's not true. Because <laughs> look, Court documents list about $300 in advisory fees that the estate paid to Stonebridge in early 2012. So Stonebridge's lawyer <clears throat> and said that those fees were for administrative work requested by Jamie, but then he wouldn't elaborate. The question is whether Stonebridge was selected because it was best suited to serve Brittany or because Lou Taylor had a stake in the company. This guy, this forensic accountant said, and I don't know why y'all had to go to a forensic accountant because I made TikToks about this like a year and a half ago. It is kind of a little bit annoying. Like, I'm very happy that this is all out in the public, but I, I worked with the New York Times. I mean, I, I, maybe I'll just make that interview public, too. I have actually recorded about two hours of footage of me in September 2020 discussing with the New York Times all of this stuff. And it's kind of, I don't care about the mainstream media, so, like, that's the reason I'm not making it a big deal. But it is kind of annoying, like, to literally have lost my job. I literally quit my job because of Lou Taylor. And they didn't give me one shout out in this whole fucking article. Like, it's a little bit infuriating. No offense. Like, it's a little bit infuriating because they, here they are saying the question is whether Stonebridge was selected because it was best suited to serve Brittany or because Lou Taylor had a stake in the company, said this random fucking forensic accountant. Girl, y'all know I was the first person to ask that. <laughs> like, it's just annoying. It's just annoying and insulting. And it kind of feels a little bit like plagiarism, but I do like samantha stark and liz day so i won't blame them for this exactly maybe there's just these other two little uh journalists they were working with maybe they're gonna give me my credit whenever i you know whenever they do part two i'm not really sure but it is pretty infuriating that like most of this stuff is stuff that i single-handedly uncovered and told them and now they're like oh this random fucking guy like come on chill out Mr. Harder, that's Lou's lawyer, said TriStar featured Stonebridge on a list of recommended financial advisors, but it was up to the clients to choose. Stonebridge is on the list because it is a boutique that provides high-level services, the lawyer said. He added that Lou's practice was to disclose her ownership stake in Stonebridge. Okay, so I do have the records and interviews. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm reading y'all's comments. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of like what I, I feel the same way. It's more like frustrating. I'm happy that this is finally being said, but like the tremendous sacrifices that I have made like financially, like y'all, I would be making a quarter million dollars this year and I'm probably not even going to make one dollar this year because I'm in debt. Like I'm in so much debt from law school. I'm in, I've literally 
sacrifice my career because of Lou Taylor and Stonebridge. And I didn't even get so much as a shout out in this article. Like, it just feels like, I don't know, maybe I'll email them and say like, what the fuck, but, um, yeah, Tatiana. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, whatever the reality is y'all, I never did this for credit. And I really like, sometimes I do, my ego gets a little in the way. It's not, I never did this for credit. I did this to free Britney Spears and indeed she is free. Oh, happy day. Keep it moving along. But the people on this channel know the truth. Um, anyway. All right. So this is an interesting thing right here that, that Mr. Harder says, oh, well, we gave people a list. Thank you so much, Jacob. We gave people a list and they got to choose and TriStar was on the list. But doesn't that sound familiar to how Brittany had to choose her mental health professionals? We gave her a list of two people and she got to choose the two. It's like, okay, but what was the other one? Like, eh, how long was the list? Why were you giving people a list with Lou Taylor's old firm on it? You know what I mean? Mr. White said the relationship between Stonebridge and TriStar has been accurately disclosed. Well, what I find interesting is whenever they were arguing with me at my job behind the scenes, part of the conversation was Lou Taylor was claiming, this is what my job told me. They said Lou Taylor claims Stonebridge and TriStar are not affiliated. And Larry Deridani or whatever his last name is, he was telling me behind the scenes on the phone, y'all like my clips, it's a lemon and a cake. He was telling me, Lou Taylor says they're not affiliated. And then I was like, well, they are affiliated. And he was like, are not or were not? Like he was trying to lawyer me down about it. Like Lou Taylor is not affiliated or was not affiliated. You know what I mean? And I was like, okay, she's the president. She was the vice president of Stonebridge and the president of TriStar. Mitch Martin was listed as the president of TriStar as well. Mitch Martin and Lou Taylor have worked together before. You got the president of one being the president of the other, the other of this one and that one. They're all going together. And I don't know, maybe I'm not a litigator like you, Larry, because he, he threw that in my face. He was like, well, I'm a litigator. So affiliated means. I said, maybe I'm not a litigator, but that's affiliation to me. Thank you so much, Reba. Y'all see I'm getting more aggravated as I go along. No story here. Lou Taylor sold her stake in Stonebridge in 2013. The terms weren't disclosed. Since then, uh, Stonebridge's lawyer said, Lou has had no role in the management or operations of Stonebridge. Thank you so much, Amber. Oh, from Louisiana. Oh, a woman freed. You are so, oh my God. Y'all are so nice. Oh, I didn't even put the thing up. Oh, this is so nice, a woman freed. I'm about to cry. I really am upset. Like, I know I shouldn't be because it's really not about me or my ego or anything like that. But, like, I'm just sitting here reliving all the things that I've gone through over the last year. And it's like, it just doesn't feel fair that, I don't know. Like, it's not for, I don't care about credit. It's just more like, I guess I'm just, like, reliving everything I had to go through because of this woman. And it just makes me emotional. That's really what it is what's who's Lou her name is Lou Taylor I know but yeah I shouldn't be annoyed but I am a little bit annoyed yeah y'all are so nice oh my name my name is BJ BJ. Actually, my real first name is Brittany. Did y'all know that? Okay, back to this. But it's spelled different. Brittany. Okay, no story here. Miss Taylor. Okay, since then, she has had no role in the management. The deal included a provision in which Lou Taylor would refer clients to Stonebridge, though she could also point them to other investment advisors. Okay, but did she have a referral fee? Mm, that's the question I want to know. Did Lou Taylor receive a referral fee? Did she receive a fee for referring her very rich, very wealthy clients? I mean, Brittany had no choice. Brittany had no choice. Lou Taylor funneled Brittany's money into Stonebridge without any choice on Brittany's part. Did she get a fee for that? Because see, the lawyers are leaving that out. As of 2016, TriStar and Stonebridge shared clients like country music star Martina McBride, Brian Kelly, and Tyler Hubbard, who each had millions of dollars at Stonebridge, according to another Stonebridge client roster. In April 2020, Stonebridge entered into a paid consulting agreement with Jamie Spears 
and, okay, this is actually new. So I will give credit where it's due. This right here, if this is true, is nothing that I ever found out. And this is a huge, huge fact. In April 2020, y'all, this was three months before I heard about the Free Britney movement and started going off about Stonebridge. Stonebridge entered into a paid consulting agreement with Jamie Spears in his capacity as conservator. Were they were paying him or was he paying them? Do you see what I'm saying? I don't know what the consulting agreement is. But the fact that Jamie entered into a consulting agreement with the financial firm that he was about to try and put all Britney's money into is very concerning. Three months later, happened to be my first month in the Free Britney movement, a lawyer for Jamie, whose name is Geraldine Wilde, told the court that he was considering consolidating Britney's money in one place. Geraldine said... Jamie had been vetting Stonebridge as an investment advisor for 13 years. And again, this is not new news. We already knew this. But way back in like September 2020, we knew this. And we told New York Times this. Everybody's been telling the mainstream media all of this stuff. This month, July, is my first video. I think it was, excuse me, it was July or August was my first video on Stonebridge, kind of making the connection, saying Lou Taylor was an investment advisor. Lou Taylor started... Um. Thank you so much, Nichelle. Write a book. Look on books so you can speak text to it too. Take up space because you deserve to be recognized. So much would not have happened. I agree. It feels like it feels like I found a lot of this stuff out first. But um Yeah. Okay. Um, told the court that he was considering consolidating okay. around the same time. And this all happened because y'all can go back and look at the timelines all happened because we were making videos about every single filing. Jamie Lynn Spears petitioned the court to move the funds in Britney's trust to an account advised by Stonebridge, which I have a full video on from September, 2020. Jamie Lynn Spears later withdrew the petition after we all made the connection that it was Stonebridge at the back of the petition. Um, her lawyer, Jamie Lynn Spears' lawyer, George Short, said there was no story here but wouldn't elaborate. Yeah, there's a story. It's on that Surprise Witness channel. Y'all go back to about September 2020 and look at those videos. Britney Spears' lawyer at the time, Sam Ingham, had earlier expressed concerns about the ties between TriStar and Stonebridge. Again, this was at issue in my leaving my job. Whenever I was talking to Larry, he was telling me, Lou Taylor expresses that she's no longer affiliated with Stonebridge and that Stonebridge and TriStar aren't, aren't affiliated and blah, blah, blah. Like this is all coming back up as at issue here in this New York Times article. In response, Geraldine wrote that Stonebridge was independent from and not affiliated with TriStar. And that was what Larry tried to argue with me about whenever I was quitting my job, that they're not affiliated. And I said, listen, I might have been born at night, but it wasn't last night. I might not be a litigator, but I know what the common sense definition of affiliation is. I just finished law school and I just passed the bar exam. I know what affiliation means. The filing didn't mention that Lou Taylor co-founded and previously owned half a stone bridge. Hmm. This is the TriStar offices. Oh, that's interesting that the first credit bank is attached to the uh, TriStar building. Two former senior TriStar executives said the firm's finances were kept under such tight wraps that they lacked access to information, like the company's balance sheets and income statements. One of the most secretive accounts at TriStar belonged to Miss Spears. Every year, bookkeepers at TriStar conducted a lengthy court-mandated accounting of her estate. The resulting documents were both extremely specific and extremely vague. They listed some of the performer's expenses in minute detail, like $4.98 at Walmart or $8.08 .08 at a Mrs. Fields cookie shop. Yet, the conservatorship has acknowledged it wasn't providing a complete description of all the estate's transactions. And again, I've, I've already told you all this many times. If you've been keeping up with me, this will not come as news to you. It would be impractical to fit the business activities and transactions into the form of traditional accounting. The conservatorship disclosed in numerous court-approved reports. Again, we've read this on my channel many times before together that Lou Taylor got the court to approve in 2010 some weird shoddy accounting where she doesn't actually have to report the royalties of Britney's estate. And Lou Taylor says on her website that she's an expert in reporting royalties. So what were they trying to hide? 
The public versions of court documents, which are heavily redacted, do not show how much money TriStar received from Britney's estate. In July, Brittany, for the first time, was allowed to choose her lawyer. She hired Matthew Rosengart, a former federal prosecutor. Mr. Rosengart has requested information and documents from, Ms. from Jamie and TriStar that could clarify where Brittany's money went and how Jamie used a network of companies and other entities to operate the estate, which we already knew because we've been talking about that for over a year. M Matthew Rosengart has repeatedly asked TriStar one question. How much money did the firm make? TriStar has refused to provide the number. TriStar is effectively telling Brittany that she should have to pay her lawyers to comb through hundreds of pages of complex, disjointed, and incomplete accountings. Thank you so much, Madison. Aw. I am so above media. That is so true. I do not care about this media, but uh, it's so annoying. I'm not, I'm not really hurt. I'm not really hurt. It's just that I'm kind of like for the first time over the last few days, like really kind of taking inventory of like what, like, you know, whenever it's like the end of the year and you have your like end of the year moments or whatever. And it's like, shit, like what I've gone through this year, what I've endured and also what I've accomplished, you know, and, and the people I've met and stuff like that. So y'all are, y'all are like a huge consolation prize to losing that stupid job, honestly. <laughs> Um, but it is like so stressful to like feel like you go to college and stuff and you learn about plagiarism and using other people's work and they make it into this huge deal and then it's like, okay, but what's really going on, girl? Whatever. Um, it, the thing that really sucks is like, I just keep getting hurt and like betrayed by people. That's, that's really what it is. Mr. Harder said TriStar's compensation was disclosed in court filings that Matt Rosengart has. So this is what uh, Lou Taylor's lawyer said. Mr. Rosengard is not being forthcoming if he claims he does not know the amounts that TriStar has been paid to date. Okay, now we're going to talk about them getting baptized. Jamie and the Taylors are close. In 2017, Rob Taylor baptized Jamie Spears and Lou Taylor in the Jordan River in Israel. Jamie, at times, gave 10% of his conservatorship income to the Taylor's Calvary Chapel at Brentwood, a practice known as tithing, according to a 2010 financial document. Mr. Spears, that's Jamie, gave tens of thousands of dollars in one year alone to the church, which is about 500 miles away from where he lives in Louisiana. How Jamie spends his personal funds is not a matter of public interest, his lawyer said. Well, I beg to, dif I beg to disagree with you. Uh, Alex, because how Jamie spends his personal funds whenever those personal funds were derived from unconstitutionally colluding with the state and the police and other criminals in order to steal that money, it does become the public's interest. And so try again, big sloppy. It was not the only money that originated with Brittany that went to religious causes linked to the Taylors. Before the conservatorship began, Brittany created the Britney Spears Foundation. Its main mission was to support a children's arts camp. Two years into the conservatorship, the foundation was shut down. Tax records show that one of its final payouts was $42,000 to Mercy Ministries, a Tennessee-based Christian group that works with young women with depression, unplanned pe pregnancy, and other issues. Now, they're calling it a Christian group that works with young women with depression, unplanned pregnancy, and other issues, but y'all should know there's a survivor's network for Mercy Ministries, which is now called Mercy Multiplied. They are no longer allowed to operate in the entire country of Australia because they were stealing government checks from, from their women that they were allegedly helping. There are all kinds of people. Oh my God, Corwin, my actual friend from life is here. Thank you. Oh my God, Corwin. Thank you. Um, there are all kinds of people that would say this was a, um, a gay conversion, a lesbian conversion therapy camp. Like, Hillsong even worked with Mercy Ministries in order to help people convert from being lesbian into being ex-lesbian or being straight. I don't know. It's really weird. I have a lot of research about Mercy Ministries. They've blocked me on Twitter. The Taylors have donated money to Mercy, and Mercy has donated to Calvary, right? So y'all see how this works, right? Lou Taylor and her husband own Calvary Chapel. They, they don't go ahead and donate the money to Mercy. Then Mercy donates some of the money to them. They're on the board of the church and they own the church. So how does that work? 
<laughs> like all tax exempt, all tax exempt. Ah. Okay. While Brittany has been a vocal supporter of the LGBTQ community, Mercy has not. In her 2013 book, Mercy's founder, Nancy Alcorn, said Mercy helped people who previously identified as lesbians. What in the hell? To adopt what she called a healthy and biblically based sexuality. She said being gay was a product of sexual confusion. Mercy's chief executive said the group's thinking has evolved. Okay, well, evolved to what? Because it's, listen, it's one thing if people want to pay their own money and do their own thing and go to that, that, that stuff. Your body, your choice, girl. You do you. But a lot of this was people sending their kids, people sending teenagers, people forcing people to go. And that's just not cool. Nina Bigar, who we have discussed before on my channel, the former director of the Spears Foundation. And if y'all want to know a little bit more about the Spears Foundation and all that, y'all can go watch the video that I made about um, Mark Steverson and Lynn Spears and all that because there was a huge lawsuit about all this stuff. Thank you so much, Gavin. Um, yes, her home, her Lou Taylor and her husband just this year, last year, bought a $1.3 million house and are calling it a church. So y'all tell me how that works. The former director of the Spears Foundation said she was surprised to learn of its contribution to mercy. She said Brittany had wanted the foundation to stay away from religious causes. Um, I would not have advised they receive the funding, Nancy Bigger said. Alex Weingarten, Jamie's lawyer, said that um, Brittany supported making the donation, which I don't believe at all. Um, now we have Lou Taylor and Off the Rack Fendi. She couldn't get it tailored, but I guess she needed everybody to know that she wears designer clothes at the Power Business Manager's Hollywood Reporter brunch that she paid for using Brittany's money. I get so annoyed when I look at this woman. Just look at her. Just look at her standing up there smiling. Thief. Criminal. If you don't, if, if I'm lying about you, Lou, facts ain't defamation, baby. We can sort it out into depositions. I'm really literally begging you at this point to tr go ahead and try something. I want you to because I got more receipts than you can ever dream of. Since the conservatorship began, Brittany had gone on two international tours, released four albums, and been a judge on the reality show The X Factor. In 2016, in the midst of a blockbuster four-year residency at a Las Vegas casino, Brittany told a court-appointed investigator that she wanted the conservatorship to end. So 2016, she said she wanted it to end. And this was um, already disclosed in, back in June or, yeah, maybe September. She is sick of being taken advantage of, and she said she's the one working and earning her money, but everyone around her is on her payroll, the investigator wrote. The following year, Variety profited, oh, sorry, the following year, Variety profiled Lou Taylor, whose clients included Steven Tyler of Aerosmith, Gwen Stefani, and Jennifer Lopez. Um, accompanying the article was an ad quoting Britney Spears, so proud to be working with the best of the best. Another ad appeared in a 2019 issue of The Hollywood Reporter that featured Lou Taylor on the cover as a business manager icon. Lou Taylor's lawyer said that buying ads is a common way for entertainers to thank their representatives and TriStar was under the impression Britney had signed off. Another lie from Mr. Harder. TriStar's work, well, a lie in my opinion, because watch him send me a letter. If Let me tell you something right now, Charles Harder. If you send me a letter, I will be reading it verbatim, word for word on this channel. And so I really strongly advise you to think long and hard before you send me anything, because I'm going to be reading it on this channel live. The one that y'all tried to get taken off the internet. I'm still here, baby, and I got zero copyright strikes because y'all were what? Lying. Okay. So basically, Mr. Harder is letting us in on a little industry secret that these people always buy ads for themselves. TriStar's work for the estate had expanded beyond the traditional role of a business manager. For example, a TriStar executive, Robin Greenhill, controlled Britney's credit card and administered her medications, according to a court investigator's report. In 2019, the conservatorship lurched into crisis. In January, Britney canceled a second planned Las Vegas residency and announced an indefinite work hiatus. Uh, Britney then entered a mental health treatment facility in what she said was an involuntary confinement. The cancellation was costly for TriStar, which stood to collect 5% of the revenue. Court documents show Lou 
then asked Jamie to change the structure of TriStar's compensation so that TriStar would automatically receive at least $500,000 a year. Jamie approved, drawing protests from Brittany's lawyer at the time. Again, this is all stuff we've been talking about on my channel. This is not news. Um, it's just a recap from the New York Times. Miss Spears' confinement turbocharged the Free Britney movement. The vocal group of fans and activists and advocates, not just fans, baby, it's not just fans, uh, questioned whether Britney was in the conservatorship against her will. They accused Lou Taylor of exploiting the singer. Look at us. In June 2019, the law firm Sidley Austin sent a cease and desist letter on Miss Taylor's behalf to a free Britney supporter whose website she claimed was defamatory. So we already talked about that was the Brian Kuchar situation. The law firm billed Miss Spears estate $350,000, which included costs related to Miss Taylor's legal action against an alleged fan named Brian Kuchar. Mr. Ingham, who was Britney's lawyer at the time, said in a court filing that the payments were probably impermissible, sorry, were probably an impermissible gift of the conservatees' funds to Lou Taylor and called for an independent review of all legal fees billed to the estate. Britney's estate also paid for black box security, which monitored her phone and secretly recorded her in her bedroom, according to Alex Vlasov, a former black box employee. Screenshots of Britney's text communications were shared with Miss Greenhill, the TriStar executive. Black Box also kept tabs on free Britney fans who criticized Miss Taylor and the conservatorship, according to internal Black Box documents. The surveillance was billed to Britney's estate. So Britney Spears paid for surveillance on us. Britney Spears paid, Britney Spears paid for us to be surveilled. Britney Spears paid for us to be stalked, targeted, harassed, and abused. Britney Spears probably paid for fake accounts to be created on the internet to stalk, harass, and abuse us, to fight with us, to Photoshop DMs of us saying things that we didn't say, which is something that happened to me. I'm wondering how much of that was Britney's money. Mr. Harder said it was appropriate to bill for the legal and security services because Ms. Taylor incurred them only as a result of her work for the estate. Listen how they trip over themselves backwards to make themselves entitled to other people's money. So if, so if something happens to me, I get to sue Lou for the money. I get to charge Lou for the money. Like it just doesn't make sense. Love and diamonds in November, 2020. TriStar stepped down as the estate's business, I think it was October, stepped down as the estate's business manager amid growing calls to investigate the firm. Mr. Harder, Lou's lawyer, said TriStar resigned after its staff received death threats, which I don't believe is true. No one gave them any death threats. They, they've said before that they received death threats, but when you look in the actual exhibits that they include, it's not death threats. It's stuff like, I hope you die or you know it's not it's not good it's not stuff you should be saying that's good i'm definitely nobody send any threats of any kind to anybody nobody send any hate the general typical disclaimer please y'all do not know how to act do not go out there and get threat anyone but lou taylor is lying all the things that she says are death threats most of the time are not mr harder <clears throat> sent eight cease and desist letters to the times you know how many he sent me not one not a damn one Demanding that reporters stop contacting employees and clients. Lan P. Vu, one of Mr. Harder's colleagues, emailed former TriStar employees warning of legal repercussions if they spoke with the Times. Many employees told the Times they wouldn't talk because they were scared of being sued. Well, that's interesting because I told the Times that I would talk on record and nobody ever put anything I had to say in the Times. And I wonder why that is. It's very confusing to me. Many employees told the Times, okay, on a recent Sunday morning, Miss Taylor arrived at the newly remodeled Cavalry Chapel Brentwood. About 60 people showed up for the service. Yeah, the newly remodeled home that y'all are living in? What y'all doing with that home? Y'all gonna make it into a mercy house? I got a question. A question, a question, a Christian rock band preceded Miss Taylor's, oh, Mr. Taylor's sermon. Dressed casually in sunglasses, slacks, and an oversized plaid shirt, Miss Taylor swayed to the music. She held her left hand aloft displaying a ring with love spelled in tiny diamonds <laughs> about three weeks later the california judge ended the conservatorship mr rosengard is still trying to determine how much money tristar made through mr uh through britney spears 
I'm embarrassed. This is Brittany. I'm embarrassed for the state of California for permitting my father to have me work as hard as he worked me all those years and never seeing a dime. Miss Spears wrote in a recent Instagram post that was later deleted. I'm embarrassed for all of them and I'm sad for them because I know my value and worth now. Okay, so now they're going to give all these people their um, research contributions and nobody from the Free Britney movement, which I find interesting. Um, Liz Day, Emily Steele. Yeah, I don't know. I, I might send these girls an email and just ask what's up. Like, I mean, wouldn't it have been a better thing to put that she, uh, that was a long article. Wouldn't it have been better to put like, oh, and another thing, she like threatened this young lawyer and this is how it happens. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Well, I mean, it really isn't like about being big enough, Steve. It's more like I have personal, like, they're sitting there crying and boohooing in their article about people working for TriStar not wanting to go on record because they're scared of getting sued. And they know that I'll go on record. I'm not scared of being sued. And I have firsthand information about what this woman has done. So it really has nothing to do with being big. I have no desire to be big. Um, yeah, I don't know. My feelings are just kind of hurt. That's all it is. I, I really like, I've been working with the New York Times in good faith and, um, I feel a little bit slighted by this. I feel a little bit like they didn't tell me this was coming out. I mean, a lot of people are going to say that, you know, you're, you're nobody. You don't deserve to know. But, like, if you had any idea how much of this research was mine, you would probably not be questioning why I'm saying this. Um, anyway. Yeah, she totally bullied me. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like... Even if they would have sent me like an email, like, hey, look for the article that's coming out. Thanks for your help, like behind the scenes. But it just feels like, and listen, I mean, framing Britney Spears looked exactly like deep dive. Let's be honest. I mean, it's it's almost like starting a border on plagiarism. I don't know. I don't know. I, maybe I'm just, maybe I just don't know how this works. Y'all know I don't know nothing about the mainstream media other than most of the time they're lying. That's what I'm figuring out these days. But this article in general, I found to be very good. There was some stuff in this article I did not know. Like, for example, that Jamie Spears had entered into a um, a consulting agreement with Stonebridge in April 2020 where either he was getting paid or they were getting paid. Like, my word. Um, so Melissa is asking, do you think Jamie made an agreement with Lou that he would make her Britney's business manager to secure the $40,000 loan? Melissa, I believe that is what is being implied in this article, and I do believe Jamie did do that. That's just my opinion. I have no way to really know. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Renate. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I do have... Um, Yeah, I know, Steve. And the, the sad part is, without the Free Britney movement, I don't think that they would know half the stuff, unfortunately. Um, maybe they're holding onto your story to drop it later. Well, maybe, but that's fine. And if they want to drop my story later, look, listen, I'm always open. At, listen, I am always open to going on the record. Anybody except Chloe Malas, CNN, because I don't trust her. She's proven herself to be a liar. Anybody but her, if y'all want to tell the story of what Lou Taylor did, please do. Because ultimately, my ultimate motivation is to get the story out. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, what was he consulting about? Yeah, I that was what it is. Like, I, like, made real sacrifices. And it's like, I'm just going to, like, fade into obscurity and, like, debt, like... I don't know, whatever. I'm just, the real issue, y'all, is that I'm gonna, it's gonna take me quite a while to, like, emotionally, like, recover from what Lou Taylor put me through, and if anybody out there has gone through a really traumatic experience or a hurtful experience, then you will know the feeling that comes along with being violated in that way and being bullied in that way and, and someone trying to control you in that way and feeling powerless in that way and I still have some hangups about it. I still have a little bit of a chip on my shoulder about it. I mean, I did the right thing. I'm proud of myself. I would do the same thing over and over again, over and over again. But it does suck. It does suck 
to like not be working as a lawyer at this big firm, my dream job. It does suck to have the wool kind of pulled from over my eyes so fast. The veil sort of lifted so quickly within corporate America where I just realized, where I just realized, oh man, sorry, I got distracted. Um, that's the thing. The, ult the ultimate reality is there's like about 600 people to a thousand people on this channel that know that have followed me from the very, very beginning that have been reading these court documents with me that have been making these discoveries with me. And y'all are the ones who know the truth. Um, hopefully you can get a job soon. Oh no, listen, I'm not looking for a job right now. I don't want to work for stupid people anymore. I realized, listen, y'all, I worked at one of the best law firms in the whole world and the people all the way at the top were not very bright. They were, uh, not good at using their common sense. They were not good at using, um, reductive reasoning. They were bullies. They were manipulative. They were not good people. And so I'm actually very traumatized by the experience and I never want to work in big law ever again. If I work in big law again, it's going to be because somebody put my name on the side of the building and I'm a partner and I'm telling other people what to do because I will never, ever, ever, ever work for stupid people again. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's true, Joe. Read it and said to myself, I know 99% of that info because of you. And that's a, that's all it is. You know, like they don't have to put my name in that article. If anything, it's actually going to take down my credit. So don't do it. Um, yes, integrity comes at a price. Thank you, Paige. Y'all are so nice. Um, is there any way I could sue them? Yeah, there's ways I could sue them. But y'all, lawsuits are hard and stressful and not fun and very expensive. And all the energy that I could be using, oh, my nose itches. All the energy that I could be using on a lawsuit against Lou Taylor, I could be using to put back into my YouTube channel. I could be using it to educate people, help people. I could take that money and donate it to you know, charities, charitable purposes, you know, and so I'm kind of thinking of it in that way. It's like, what would I actually get out of it to sue Lou Taylor? Like, everybody who looks at the situation already knows who's in the wrong and who's in the right. So, I mean, I guess I could try to get money or whatever, but like the money and everything that I have to put into it would just be so much on me that I think I just want to like, walk away from it. Um, yes, Yes, beep, bop, boop. This disillusionment is what so many people in our generation are going through. Dream jobs are often just another kind of exploitation. And and I've heard through a person who works there now that Winston and Strawn, my former employer, has actually changed and updated their social media policy as to exclude people from being able to do what I did. And so it's just another way that corporate America is infringing on people's rights in a way that the government can never get away with, right? Just because corporate America is doing it, it's fine. But think about it. How many times are you going to post something on, on the internet and you're like, oh no, I can't because my work is on here or my work friend. It's like our employers are like basically like our handlers at this point. Like people like I could get another job. I could apply for a job tomorrow and have a job by Friday. I am highly qualified, highly, highly educated, highly employable. I do not want to work for corrupt people and I do not want to work for stupid people. And that's what I was doing working at Winston and Strawn, no offense. It was people that were not using their reasoning. They were not using common sense. They were using, well, technically sense in order to enrich their client or their alleged client. I don't know if she ever was a client, but they were putting the money in the business over integrity. And that was the discussion I had with them over and over. I said, I don't want to work at a place. I don't want to be at a place that basically is making me choose my integrity or my job, my paycheck, my ability to, to pay my bills or my ability to tell the truth. And it's just not fair that they put me through that. It's just not fair. But what would I really get out of suing them? Oh, you were right, BJ. Like, it just would be too stressful. And honestly, y'all, nobody wants to sue a law firm. Like, can you imagine? <sighs> one day I'll start a law firm. We'll all start one together. Has anyone heard about the founder of the Remnant Church drama affiliated with Calvary? No, White Light Moon, I have not. 
the fight has always been about sovereignty and oh has it you need a document the truth isn't profitable sure isn't sure isn't what goes around comes around eventually is the dang truth yeah exactly corwin it's really crazy how corporations can manage people's social media like that. They didn't even do that to us when they were in the army. Yeah, because corporations can get away with doing a lot more to us. Think about it. If Facebook was run by the government, for example, they wouldn't be able to just poof, take people off the site like Facebook does or Twitter or Instagram. I mean, people just get their accounts just go missing out of nowhere for telling the truth. The government wouldn't be able to get away with that. Somebody would sue them. But Facebook, Twitter... You know what I mean? That's private companies. They can make their own rules. Same thing with my employer. They can infringe on my free speech because the Constitution doesn't apply to private employer, uh, employers. The Constitution only applies to the government. So they are able to get away with silencing their employees in a way that the government would never be able to get away with. I mean, maybe, listen, the government gets away with some stuff, so maybe they could. But um, y'all know what I mean? Integrity in the slimy corporate world is hard. Government ties are there, of course. Oh my God, Diana, honestly, same. Me too. My dream job is to be an heiress, but I'm in the wrong family for that. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, imagine the level of pervasive control with Web 3.0 coming, anonymity being erased completely. I know. U.S. government is a type of corporation. Yeah, it is. That's true. Yeah, I mean, the U.S., uh, corporate America is the root of all corruption. It's true. Those are all sketchy artists. I mean, I don't dream job anymore. I just want to live. I don't even, same. I just want to live. I don't even care about a job. I just want to make enough money to, like, buy, you know, makeup and pay my bills and go on occasional vacations and, I don't know, like, maybe eat food sometimes. Like the dream job thing, I'm so jaded about it. And that's why I'm kind of like emotional in this video today because it's like I really sacrificed a lot for this case and it's kind of like all like settling now, you know, like it's all like the dust is settling as they say. And it's just kind of like, damn, what did we just do? <laughs> like, there's good, there's bad, there's, there's, it's just a lot. You know what I mean? Like it's just like a life moment. Y'all are like experiencing me um, go through. In, li in real time. Oh, thank you so much, Athena. Um, yes, I have Thea. So Thea's asking, have I done any investigation on Brittany's other estate accounts that took loans in her name? Merrill Lynch, City National Bank, and Morgan Stanley. And yes, I have. Um, I can probably do a video on that. Um, yeah, uh, Bebop Boop. I did not deserve to lose my job because I told the truth. And that's why I quit because I knew or I felt that if I stayed at the company and didn't quit that in like six months to a year, like they would find some reason to fire me and it would just be, then they would be able to say they fired me. And I never wanted anyone to be able to say they fired me. So I said, okay, bye. I didn't even give it two weeks. I just said I quit. And that's another thing too, y'all. Y'all don't, y'all know you don't have to give it two weeks. Like, there's no rule that says that. Like, I know, like, sometimes you want to get that extra two weeks money. But, like, if you are financially able, like, this is not legal advice. This is just, like, regular life advice. Like, you do not have to give a two weeks notice to your job. Now, there's reasons you might want to. Like, you know, you don't want to let your team down. Maybe you have some coworkers that you need to finish projects with. Or you don't want to screw them over. Totally fair. But the way that people feel like they have to give a two weeks, like, that's, that's just more corporate brainwashing. Why? Your boss don't have to give you a two weeks. They say you're fired and you got to leave or the police are coming. So why I got to give you a two weeks? And I didn't give it two weeks. Huh. I hope the former law firm reads, the, reads that article too. Me too. Yep. My job loss was serendipity, Heather. Love y'all too. Y'all are so nice. Uh, I am really happy that y'all are here. I like my boss at the last job. Gave two weeks. Plenty of people up and quit, even managers. Exactly. And it's all like a case by case. I'm not saying never give a two weeks. I have given two weeks notice at every job I've ever worked except the lawyer one. And the reason I didn't was because 
of how they um, treated me. So Kat said she had to sign that she would actually give a four weeks notice. Now, I would be interested in looking into the legal ramifications of that because um, that would be considered involuntary servitude where you force someone to work for longer than they wanted to work. So I'm actually interested in, in knowing more about those types of policies. I've never heard of that before, but I have no doubt that they did make you sign that. Don't get me wrong. I just don't know if it's actually enforceable. Um, oh, yeah. Email me, Frankie. I'm accepting new theories all the time. Um, yes, Katie. I, this is right. You are correct. I am living my best life. I do not need a job that questions my integrity and makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong. Correct. It's like being in a cult. And I'm not working for no more cults. Um, standard notice is four weeks in the UK. A woman freed says if you don't give a notice, you don't get a reference. But usually if you're like going to quit a job and not give a notice, you're not going to get a reference anyway. But good point. Good point. Um... All right. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to go. This microphone is making my nose itch and all of that. Um, thank y'all so much to the people who gave the super chats today, super whatevers. I'm over it like already, like about the whole thing. Like I'll probably send them an email just to be like, what, like what's up? But I never really did this to be in the New York Times. I never really did this to be in the mainstream media, but it is just a little bit infuriating that these randoms that would have literally called us conspiracy theorists a year ago are like now the experts they're citing. Like, why would you cite them when you have a lawyer right here that you could cite? Like, mm, 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 but whatever. Anyway, New York Times just does what it wants to do and the feeling's mutual. So, um, oh, okay. Yeah. Y'all send the emails. Um, cool. Facts ain't defamation. Love you, mean it. See you later.